Hi everybody, welcome to The Family Table. This is our first series of dinners, desserts, and things that bring everybody to the family table. Family table has changed in the last few years. People are busy, they're running around, but the family table is important. Years ago, my family table was six. Now it's just me and my husband. Sometimes it's at the breakfast bar, sometimes it's in front of the TV watching the news. But it's always about what you've done today or what you're going to do. It's about conversation and the family being together. So whatever your family table is, whether it's the dining room, the breakfast bar in front of the TV, it's important to continue. I would like to welcome you to my home and how we're gonna put some meals on the table for your family. Hi everyone, welcome to the next episode of The Family Table. This time we're gonna do stuffed meatloaf muffins and we're gonna to throw together some roasted potatoes because you really need something to go with your meatloaf. And at any time you can do whatever vegetable you would like, whether you wanna do a salad or, or any kind of vegetables, that's up to you. What we're gonna start with is the meatloaf. I buy the meatloaf mix already done up. I don't go and try to buy everything and try to mix it together. So it's a meatloaf mix. Meatloaf mix is traditionally ground beef, pork, and veal. So we're gonna start, I'm gonna open this up and we're gonna get this going. I'm just gonna put it right here in this bowl. I got these um, pretty colored bowls. They used to be my mom's and I still use them today. So I'm gonna take that out of the way. And here's the other thing. Again, like in the last episode, we wanna make things easy. So I use a meatloaf mix. It's got all the right seasonings in it. Everything that I want is in this mix. We're gonna do two eggs and we're gonna lightly beat them. So we're not messing with them once we get them into the, the mix. Whoops, here we go. Get it right in that junk garbage bowl. Get the thing again. Um, when I do this, I don't, I am not uh, loyal to any particular product. If I was, I would let you know only because that is the product that works the best for the particular recipe I'm using. So we get this beat just slightly. You don't have to go crazy with that. And we're going to do breadcrumbs. Now, here's the thing with the breadcrumbs I make my own. Everybody has those ends of the bread that nobody wants to eat. So you just take them, you put them out, you let them dry completely. They have to be dried completely. And then what you do, you just put them in a food processor, mix them up. Keep it in a sealed container and you're good to go. No one should have to buy breadcrumbs. If you wanna make it Italian breadcrumbs, put Italian seasoning in it. Other than that, you're all set. You take your meatloaf mix, Throw that into the party. Put that right in. Throw that. Half a cup of milk. And then what you do is you mix it all up. Oh, and then we get those eggs in there. So we get this all mixed up. Get your eggs in there too. and mix it. Now, you can use a spoon, you can use whatever you want, you can use your hands, because at some point you're gonna put your hands in here. So let's get this mixed up and then we'll start messing with it with our hands. After you get this all mixed up, what I'm gonna have you do is make six pretty good size baseball meatballs. And then we're gonna start putting them in the pan. It's all mixed up, pretty good. Get this all going here for you. Now, just move that out of the way. What we're gonna do is get the meatballs going here. I'm just gonna move everything and, ooh, put my hands in there. I'm just going to grab a plate. And I'm going to put the meatballs on the plate. So here we go. Hands that got to get in there. Got to get down and dirty here. So 
so like I said about baseball size everybody pretty much knows what a baseball is so you can make them smaller I just like the fact that they're like you know muffins and this one's a little big so let's just take some back out just make them if they're not the right size just look at them they all should be pretty much the same size you know for cooking purposes so let's get these little balls going here oh my goodness four five oh, six Okay, I guess one meatball is not the right size, but that's okay. Let's keep them like this. And then, that's good. Let me get this right out of the way too. I'm just gonna put this back here. Wash your hands because I don't wanna be touching anything else after you've done your meatballs. The next step would be, now I already got some peppers and onions cut. I did that earlier. You can take any pepper, red, green, yellow, orange, it doesn't matter what pepper you use. It's a small onion, medium pepper. Get that all diced up so it's nice and, again, try to get them as uniform as possible so they cook properly. You're gonna take a muffin pan. You are gonna spray it with cooking spray. Now, you take your meatballs that you made, you're gonna now cut them in half. And you're gonna place half of it in the pan. Here we go. Just half of that goes right into that pan. You're gonna save the other half for the tops later. Like I said, you can make them smaller. I like to make them bigger like this because it's pretty much a portion size. You're gonna put your hands and you're gonna push it down a little bit and try to make it go up the sides a little bit and then you're gonna put a nice little well in there. When you make them this size, they're nice. You can just stop, put them in the freezer. Whatever leftovers you have, you pop them in the freezer. You cut them, you make a nice meatloaf sandwich. Personally, I'd rather wait for the meatloaf sandwich. You know, like Thanksgiving, you always want the turkey sandwich and the soup. Well, in my case, I want the meatloaf sandwich. So you just do that up the side. Make that little well. Okay. Wash your hands again. It's always about washing your hands. Now that you've got your little well and the onions and the peppers you cut, you're gonna take the onions or the peppers, it doesn't matter which one goes first, and you're gonna put it right in that well. You got this going on here. And it depends, you know, if you like onions, put a little more. You do not have to use the peppers if you don't want to. You can just use onions. My daughter, when she makes it, she doesn't use any of the vegetables, she just puts cheese in it. She likes like, you know, uh, cheese stuffed hamburger. Well, she just likes to do the cheese. Then you take the peppers, put those right on the top. I like red peppers. I mean, I like them all, but I like this, the little sweetness of the red peppers. If you want to be creative, use a little red, use a little green, make it for the holidays. My husband likes mushrooms. So sometimes I put a little bit of mushroom in there. So it's one, of, it's one of those things that you can call it your own and do what you want to do with it. Now what we're going to do here is take a little bit of Kobe Jack cheese. Again, put the cheese you like. If you like the pepper jack, go right ahead. Me, eh, I'll pass on the pepper jack. Kobe Jack is fine with me. Just put a little bit in there. Yeah. Okay. 
You wanna put this, matter of fact, I'm gonna stop my oven now, 375. So it can be um, preheated. Now, barbecue sauce, whatever kind you like. You are just gonna put a little bit right on that cheese. A little bit of barbecue sauce. There we go. You can make your own. Again, I'm not brand loyal. Might be this one this time. It might be another one some other time. You could take your little tops, flatten them out a little bit, and put that right on the top. And kind of tuck them in, you know, like you're making a bed. Tuck it right in there. And there we go. We're going to use that cheese again later when they're almost done. Or you can just wait till they are done and just put a little cheese on the top. Get this going right here. Tuck it in a little bit. Don't they look like muffins already? I put these in the freezer when they're done. You know, me and my husband will have a couple. Well, I'll have one, he has two. But I ain't complaining. The rest goes in the freezer for a later date. One, I gotta say, one I do say for my sandwich. But, um, they're nice, they just, they, they stay together, just like a muffin. And you put them in the freezer. And you have them when you want them later. Okay, now. Look at these cute little muffins. The other good thing about this um, recipe is you can actually do this ahead of time. Get them in the muffin pan and put them in the refrigerator. You can do it at night, put them in the oven when you get home from work or whenever. You don't have to do it all now and cook it all now. It all can be done ahead of time. And sometimes when you do this, it kind of like stays firmer because you've, you've cooled it because now you've messed with it a lot, the meat. So now you just put a little bit of that barbecue sauce right on the top. And what we're gonna do is it's all about getting your hands dirty. We're gonna just rub it in. I'm gonna take that, and we're gonna just massage these little guys, or girls, whatever. Put them all around. Make sure that your meat is covered. There we go. Okay, barbecue sauce off the hands. Now here's the other trick, and do not miss this trick. You will have fat content. It will go all over your oven. You will put it in a cookie sheet. If you don't, you will not be mad. You'll be very mad at me, and not happy. So put it in a cookie sheet. Make sure it is sitting, oh, a little smoky. Make sure it is sitting inside the sheet like that, not leaning over because it will go on your oven. Now, while that's in the oven, why don't we put together a little side? Okay, earlier I cut up these potato, I washed these potatoes. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna get this bowl dumped. I'm gonna use this bowl. We're going to take the potatoes. You are going to get your handy dandy chef's knife. One that everybody should have. I've washed these. I cleaned these. I do not take the skins off my potatoes. I like the skins. The skins are good for you. You definitely have to clean them very well because you don't want dirt. You're going to now dice these potatoes into nice little chunks. Throw them in the bowl. You 
You're going to use about uh, six medium potatoes. Get them all just, and you're going to try to keep them all kind of as uniform as possible anyways, because when you do that, they just cook a lot better. One more. Here we go. Now. I'm going to take this. You're going to take some olive oil. You're going to put about a third of a cup. I'm just going to eyeball it. I make these potatoes all the time. Me and um, my family, my kids, my grandchildren, we go up north and um, we put these in the oven. We go outside. We make this constantly. That with a uh, nice rack of ribs. So we let this um, cook. Sometimes we use a, a pot on the counter rather than you turning on the oven because let's face it, once you turn on the oven in the summertime. Again, onion soup mix, olive oil. You mix that up in a bowl. Or again, you can do this the night before, put it in a Ziploc bag, put it in your fridge. When you're ready, you come home, you put it in a casserole dish, and while it's about 450, about 30 minutes, just check it. You don't want the edges burning. I would stir it like once during the cooking time. But once it's all mixed, just spray the baking pan. Just put it in. Now, what I like to do, my daughter kind of taught me that. She just cuts up another small onion and actually puts it on with this. It just gets nice and soft, and um, it's, just, it's just a nice idea. So we're going to take this onion that I have right over here, and we are going to do that. We're going to put some extra onions on this. And if you don't like the onions or you just want a little bit of onion, then don't bother. You already got the little minced onions with the um, soup mix, so you really don't have to. But if you're one of those people that kind of, you know, like onions and you want to put it on, go right ahead. Um, it adds a nice flavor. The onions get nice and soft and it, it just adds to it. You know, you want to use the easy stuff, the mix and stuff like that, but you still want to make it homey that you've done it. So just chop it up and it doesn't have to be like, like it doesn't have to be like really diced pieces, but you do want it um, kind of chopped because the ones in the, in the uh, soup mix are very small. But just do this. Now you just take it, just put it on your, your onions right on the top of your potatoes. And then this goes in the oven. And what you have is a nice corn on the cob. That'll go really nice with this. But any vegetable, even a salad, you know, you should get your veggies in there. I know the onions are too, but you really want to get your veggies in there. So now we have that done. We get that in the 350 oven. Uh, uh, no, I'm sorry. I'll take that back. That is a four. 50 oven. And when you're, if you're in doubt, um, of course I don't have the recipe, but it is on the package. Put that in. You don't have to worry about anything coming out. That'll stay perfectly in your, your oven. Now, we did all that, right? I do have them done. Because what's best of actually seeing what a done product looks like. So let me just clean off this, just do this. So I made a batch earlier. We have in our warming tray here, a little muffin meatloaf. 
our roasted potatoes. And just stir that up a little bit. Look at that. And I did put the onions in. You can see the onions along with the little onion bits. Whoops. Oh, they're escaping. We take that. Let me just put it out on a plate. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is our meatloaf muffins with roasted potatoes. Mm. Now, how's that to put on your family table? <laughs>